Welcome to The Topic on HCC TV. I'm Todd Duplantis. If you're watching us now, this is a show about our students, our programs, and our reach into the community. Once again, uh, make sure you join us on all of our social media channels. You can catch us on Facebook, Twitter. We're also on Instagram, Snapchat, and most importantly, YouTube. You can find us under Houston Community College District. If you subscribe to our YouTube channel, we'll send you a notification when shows like this are posted. And if you listen to podcasts, Podcasts. We have all the audio versions of our shows available at hccs.edu slash podcasts. We are talking about returning to our campuses, but this time around, what's going on over the summer? We usually have summer camps at HCC, and you know the COVID pandemic showed us both the challenges and the promise of technology. HCC's IT Continuing Education Department is introducing area students to ways they can contribute to the next generation of solutions. Program Director Samir Saber tells us how. Good afternoon, Samir, how are you? Good afternoon, Todd. So I know we've had summer camps in the past and we weren't able to do so last summer. Um, tell us what you've got lined up this coming summer. Well, actually we did have uh, summer camps last summer. We, we made it work somehow, believe it or not. So we, we did, we actually have had some summer camps since 2014 and we've kept that trend going. So yeah, this, this summer, we, um, as far as DIT and, and CE goes, we, we are holding three different camps, um, serving 100, 120 students. So one of them is in VR, virtual reality. That's uh, 40 students. That's going to be June 21st to the 25th at West Loop. We have another one that we just put together um, today, actually uh, planning for North Forest. Uh, June 28th to the 2nd, that's going to be 20 students. That's for Swift, Swift coding, that's Apple. And then the third camp that we're doing will be at Stafford, and that's going to be July 12th to the 16th, and then that will serve 60 students, so 120 total. What are these camps targeted for? What are the age of the students you're looking to reach out to? We're looking at middle school and high school students. Um, basically, uh, students that are in, in low-income um, families, you know, areas that, that really could use um, more, more service in terms of exposure for technology. Um, we're, we're reaching out to all our P16 areas. Um, so Ailey, Fort Bend, Houston, Katy, Spring Branch, Stafford School District. So again, they're, they're mostly my, just minority students that just need exposure to these these technologies. Are these uh, courses paid for by grants? How does that work? And can anyone sign up? Do they have to qualify? Everything is through a, it's grant funded. It's through the Texas Workforce Commission's grant called the Governor Summer Merit Program. Um, and so we were fortunate to, to get it um, approved this year. It's, it's not something, it's something we apply every year. Sometimes we get it, sometimes we don't. Um, for example, last year we, we we didn't get that funding, but we're very fortunate. So it includes all the equipment, including a, a CAM director, which is uh, Raymond Keller that, that we'll talk to you on the show here, of course, and then a program manager, all, all the equipment, so the VR equipment, the licenses for um, the VR platform, and Thing, things of that nature. What are the kids going to get a chance to learn in the VR camp? Yeah, that, that's something Mitch will, Raymond, we call Mitch, will we'll touch in, uh, in some more. But um, basically for, for Swift, um, it's, it's just learning how to code. So um, they'll be using mostly this thing called uh, Swift Playgrounds. So it's, it's basically solving puzzles. And, so they still learn all the fundamentals, the for loops, the variables, the things like that. It's basically you, you play, um, it, it's a gamification right. of learning. Um, and for the VR, it's, it's also something that, you know, as, as you know, uh, we're, we're big on the VR front, thanks to our friends um, from ACL. And, and we've, we've already made a lot of strides using the Engage platform, which is a, a VR platform that the students will be using and they'll also be using their, um, their Oculus headsets that we're getting, just brand new equipment. 
being that kids nowadays um, are very much into the gaming world, does that make them more apt for learning how to code and also to work with virtual reality? Um, and is middle school the perfect age to catch them to get them started with this? Yeah, you know, um, it's, it's a trend in STEM in general. Um, it's the gamification of learning is, is, is across the board, even cybersecurity and all those things. So, so yeah, it's, it, it's about making it fun. It's about um, getting the students access to this technology that they probably have never been seen before uh, or they just don't have access to. So, so right, it's, it's raising awareness and the younger they are, the better because we are trying to build that pipeline. I know, for example, the SWIFT coding, we've only been doing that now for about four years at HCC, and I believe we were one of the first colleges in the nation that started the SWIFT coding program. Um, for these camps, because I know you've done a number of them with the students, uh, the younger students, are you noticing that the students continuing, continue on with this uh, as a career or maybe study more of it as they move on to, to college? Yeah, so, so Swift is one of those languages that's really picking up, um, even in enterprise world. So it's not just about being able to release apps in, in the iOS, um, you know, the Apple ecosystem. Um, there's a huge push to get the K through 12 students um, to join the Apple ecosystem. And, and that's why they've been doing a lot of initiatives across the nation and, and Shilpa our, our resident Apple fellow can tell you a little bit more about that relation that we have with them and some of the other partners we have. Going back to the age of the, the kids and the, the drive of STEM, of getting them involved, are you noticing that they choose these as careers? Or do you have enough data to see if maybe the kids who started learning this in 2017 have progressed through uh, their, their schooling and maybe going off to college and moving into these as a, as a uh, major. Have you been able to track any of that data yet? I know we're tracking that data, but from my point of view, um, I'm actually really, really shocked and surprised that a lot of our youth are not considering IT as a career. Yeah. They're more of users, you know. And, um, I've visited Stafford High School before, and, and we, we had a similar approach where we, we presented all our programs to seven different, you know, um, groups of students. and. And, and many of them, you know, when you ask them, are, are you thinking about IT? They, they, they're just, they're not thinking about it, but they do love the technology. And when you start telling them, hey, you know what? Um, didn't you have network issues today? Well, guess what? You had a construction truck that was cutting, probably cutting the lines over there. You know, this is how it works. So what about your phone? And, and don't you think about, you know, the, the, the support needed for those apps or the developers? And so once you start doing that, they realize it. And, and that's part of why we've been doing these summer camps, right? Is to, to expose them to all of that and not just, and go beyond just the camps, maybe see our, our labs. And this is really when the light bulbs hit that it's not just the jobs that are like the handy kind of jobs. You know, there are a lot of jobs in IT, of course. And there are three camps coming up. Once again, one of them is at the Stafford campus, one in North Forest, one at the West Loop. Are you expecting these camps to all be full? Yes. Um, we already all right. so we have almost full registration, uh, at least uh, of students showing interest. The key here, folks, if you're a parent and you're watching, you want your kid enrolled in this camp, enroll today. Get them signed up now because these camps are going to fill up. Samir Saber, thanks for being on the show. We are going to uh, continue talking about our summer camps. When we come back on the topic, we're going to be talking with the camp director from these, from these camps. We'll have that and more coming up on the topic after this. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Meet the scan, a simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early. I'm here to save you. But I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. Oh man, that's a new fence. 
If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at SavedByTheScan.org. Roll over. Chance high five. All right. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. And your mother and... I am totally a hot person. Right, guys? Thanks for being honest. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Adopt pure love at theshelterpetproject.org. Welcome to HTC. Let me teach you. Let me help you get college credits. Let me train you for a new career. Let me change your life. Come learn with us. HCC, for everyone, anytime, any way. Welcome back to The Topic on HCC TV. I'm Todd Duplantis. Once again, want to remind you, if you're watching us on the cable channel, make sure you jump on over to social media. Follow us on Twitter. Find us on Facebook. We're on Snapchat, Instagram, and of course, our YouTube channel. You can find us under Houston Community College District. If you subscribe to the YouTube channel, we will send you notifications when our shows are newly posted, just like this one. And if you're into audio podcasts, well, you can download the audio versions of our show at hccs.edu slash podcast. The summer is in full swing right now, which means for us here, here at HCC, it's time for summer camps. We have STEM camps. We've had them for the last several years, and we're joined now by camp director, Professor Raymond Keller. Welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Thank you very much for having me on. Raymond, let me ask you, how long have you been with HCC, and um, how long have you been involved with these camps? I've been involved with the camps since 2015. Uh, I was uh, more on a voluntary uh, basis, and then I went into a more management basis, uh, talking uh, with the state, uh, uh, getting all the paperwork in order. I started uh, uh, working with HCC uh, as a faculty member in 2019, and it started full time uh, this uh, past year in uh, July 2020. What have you noticed with dealing with the kids at these camps? Um, obviously, Samir was telling us earlier when he, you talked to the classes before about IT, not many of them are interested, but I imagine the ones that are coming to this program are very interested in STEM, IT, VR, and the coding program. The kids, as uh, they are younger, they are very, very interested in all the different technologies, especially uh, with the games that they play, uh, the different tools, the online learning that they experienced this past year. How does that all uh, work? And uh, this, uh, these camps uh, give you a good uh, chance to get a behind the view scenes of how uh, these interactions work. What do the camps look like? Do the kids show up at like uh, eight in the morning, start working, take a lunch break? Are they there till the afternoon? How long are they and what's their day look like? Their day is typically about three hours. Uh, they arrive in the morning and then we usually provide uh, lunch. Uh, for these camps, we will be providing uh, lunch uh, uh, sponsored by uh, PepsiCo. And uh, they uh, work uh, through uh, the entire uh, camp. Uh, they are uh, hard at work. So you've got uh, three of them going on, two of them with uh, coding, the Swift coding, I believe one with VR as well. Um, what are you, uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about each one of those. What will they get out of the VR camp? So the VR camp, they are going to be using the Unity software, uh, kind of similar uh, to the Swift uh, coding camps. They will be working on uh, laptops to uh, actually code and uh, work how uh, interactions uh, go within a VR setting. So how to move forward, how to place objects, how to uh, create entire environments. Uh, a lot like Minecraft uh, actually. So they're gonna be able to build uh, things and interact with them on the back end. It's not just a selection. Uh, so they're actually gonna learn how these things uh, are really created uh, using uh, these different technologies. Middle school students, are they, uh, and I asked Samir this earlier, are they the perfect age for learning this technology? Are they more advanced than you would think when you get them in these classes? Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, you'd be surprised how a 12 year old can just uh, see things uh, differently uh, than someone who has more set in their ways and has not maybe even been introduced to these things. Um, uh, the younger the student, uh, the better, honestly, in learning all of these different things. Do you feel these students are going to move into this as a career, or do you think it's going to be a hobby 
Um, what is your take on that? I know uh, you may not have enough data to make that assumption, but what is your take on it? Talking with students in past camps, uh, a lot of them uh, were looking into uh, possibly uh, going into the field. They were interested in uh, different uh, programs that we offered at HCC. Some of the high schoolers uh, were interested in uh, all the different things that we offer. So we had conversations with them to help them get enrolled and into the right program that fit their interest. A lot of people also pursue this as a hobby. So the Swift Apple coding, a lot of them go on to develop applications that they go and submit and do things independently as well. And these are students who may not have these opportunities otherwise because of their socioeconomic status, is that correct? Yes, this is correct. So we try and target high impact, low income schools to give those students the opportunity to experience different technologies that they otherwise may not have been able to be exposed to. Let's talk about the SWIFT programming. I've got some notes here that say SWIFT programming with playground. The students really enjoyed that. What is that all about? So the SWIFT playground, as mentioned in the previous segment, is a gamification of the learning process. So you have a little avatar, you have different objectives that you need to complete, and you complete these by writing a code to have the little person move around and complete these objectives. You've been with these camps for a few years. What have you noticed uh, that you're doing differently now at the camps than when you first arrived? Um, have they progressed in a, in a great way or do you see us doing a lot more with the students than we first initially did? We have uh, more students. Uh, so 120 students in previous years, it might have been 40 uh, to 50 uh, students. Uh, so we are really expanding the scope of uh, what we are doing and how we uh, approach it. Uh, we deliver this uh, content. Uh, we are refining uh, the tools and the lesson plans to better uh, reach uh, these students uh, based on feedback uh, from previous years. Who works with the students? Is it uh, HCC adjunct faculty, regular faculty, people from the, the, the gaming departments, or, or I should say the, uh, the uh, programs that you use or the software? Who exactly works with the students? It is uh, full-time and part-time faculty members uh, from uh, the umbrella of DIT, so okay. gaming, advanced manufacturing, uh, and networking. It's a broad uh, range. Uh, a lot of these uh, professors have been uh, working on the camps for several years, uh, so they are returned, uh, so uh, there's not a lot of reskilling involved as well, but as well as progression. We're talking about summer camps for the IT program for kids over the summer here on our HCC campuses. There are three of them, by the way, June 21st through 25th for virtual reality, the VR. And uh, that's happening at the West Loop from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., 40 students allowed there. June 28th through July 2nd for SWIFT at North Forest Campus, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., 20 students there. And then July 12th through 16th for the SWIFT coding program at the Stafford Campus, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., they are allowing up to 60 students. So keep that in mind. We've got a few camps over the summer. One place you can go to register, we'll put the uh, address where you can uh, go to register the kids for the camp on your screen. And keep in mind, these camps fill up pretty fast, so you want to go ahead and register today. Raymond, any other thing you'd like to get across to parents who may be on the fence? You know, I'm not sure if I'm going to send my kid. Um, obviously, these are popular camps, and their kids are going to get a lot out of it. So uh, this uh, segues uh, greatly into what a lot of high schools are uh, doing with inclusion into uh, technology and a lot of their uh, classrooms. It uh, really prepares them for the future. Absolutely. Raymond, we appreciate you being on the show. Uh, we look forward to talking to you in the future again. Okay, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll hear all about this Apple Swift coding. We're going to speak with one of our Apple fellows here at HCC. Stay tuned. The topic returns after this. HCC, for everyone, anytime, any way. Being prepared is a part of who you are. But it's especially important in the case of a disaster. Be informed about possible emergencies in your area. Make a plan that covers where you'll go in an emergency. Build a kit with the things you need to survive. There's no one more capable of planning for your situation than you. Start your plan today. Go to ready.gov slash my plan. 
today I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. Really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. Through a nationwide network of food banks, Feeding America serves virtually every community in the United States. See how you can help your community. Visit feedingamerica.org. The faculty at HCC represents the best of the city. They're committed to getting our students to their goals. A four-year degree. Workforce training. A better life. HCC, for everyone, anytime, any way. Welcome back to The Topic. I'm Todd Duplantis. We're talking about STEM summer camps here at HCC. But before we get back to the subject, I want to remind you to look for us in social media. If you're watching us on the cable channel, thanks for joining us today. Find us in social media. You can find us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. We're also on Instagram, Snapchat, and most importantly, our YouTube channel. You can find us under Houston Community College District. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and we'll send you notifications when shows like this are posted. We also have audio podcasts available. You can download them all. Of course, find us on Apple Podcasts and at hccs.edu slash podcasts. School and industry partners are vital to these programs here at HCC for the STEM summer camps. And Shilpa Fancy. Program Coordinator for Computer Programming and Apple Fellow joins us this afternoon. Good to see you, Shelpa. Good afternoon, Todd. First off, tell us what is an Apple Fellow so that people uh, would understand. This is uh, one of the assigned position uh, by, um, as a faculty member that has been given to me uh, to oversee uh, different school districts and partnership with Lamar University and uh, technology support coming from Apple. So all this is talking about the Apple curriculum and how to integrate that into K through 12 uh, schools. Just to give uh, folks a little bit of history of what's uh, happened with Apple, we actually uh, signed an agreement several years ago with Apple. I believe it was 2017 because I was there at the press conference. Uh, Apple came to town and they made the announcement of the Swift coding program. And HCC was one of the first colleges involved with this uh, Swift coding. Um, the technology, is it pretty much the same as it was in 2017 or is it uh, changed in a way? It has changed in little bit but the coding practices remain the same uh, the features they have add-on features to that whatever existing but the programming logic and design and development all remain the same uh, all you see is more web enhanced or uh, app enhanced uh, support. Do we have different, different uh, levels of certification in the Apple Swift coding program? It has been just introduced, but it is the basic uh, starts with the exploration, then learn into fundamentals and then move on to the advanced part of uh, Swift coding. And there are level one certificates that are being um, given as a support uh, students can get but they are outside HCC. Uh, they are through CertiPort. Um, there are some certifications. But our goal here is to integrate Swift coding as much as possible, right. starting from middle school through uh, high school, so that students get involved and learn coding. And this partnership promotes community engagement, creativity, and coding. Uh, you're working with school districts uh, how is this partnered with Lamar University? What role do they play? Lamar University has their own program where these educators uh, get involved. These selected educators are going through their uh, credentialing so that they can attain uh, that kind of uh, credential to teach uh, courses that are part of the coding curriculum. How were schools selected uh, to participate in the STEM summer camps? So these were selected uh, based on the feeder, pat feeder patterns, and those are serving in the low socioeconomic community or status. 
those schools are selected and then the included uh, districts that were part of or they, they got involved were Aleaf ISD, Stafford uh, Municipal School District, KT ISD and Fort Bend ISD. And we need to, we, we aim for expanding as many school districts in greater Houston area as much possible. But uh, right now we are working with these four districts. For coding for the SWIFT program, um, are you finding that middle school students are very apt to picking up on this pretty quickly? That's an interesting question. But uh, there are so many tools and Apple has made it so easy uh, not, and fun uh, at the same time. So they get attracted. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of progression since last four years that there are more middle school students that are involved, middle, middle school educators that are involved because they want to see their students uh, get into this uh, SWIFT curriculum as much possible. Is this something that uh, once you learn it uh, through the HCC STEM summer camp that these students can go back and do coding on their iPhones or um, work on projects independently outside of school? I mean, is it something that you can carry and maybe create an app on your own? Yes, you can. And uh, once you go to these different levels, you will want to know more and more. And as you go more and deeper, then you know that you want to do app. And when you see those apps happening on the phones, you see those apps you can play with, uh, some spark might go into their heads and say that, oh, I need to create an app. And they have been doing that and high schools have been promoting that as well because I have seen a lot of, lot of uh, changes and uh, students are taking those challenges all the way in their community, uh, in their school districts, in their classrooms and making it happen. Are you also noticing with these camps that a lot of these students have uh, ideas that are totally different than things you would have thought of or maybe the instructors would have thought of? I was in that middle school level. I never had thought of these kind of ideas that these students are coming up with. So I'm amazed. And each time I see a new thing, uh, they, these kids amaze you all the time. <laughs> and um, that's, that's a great tool for them to just go over with and then they have this technology they have this support they have the teachers they have the educators they have us everybody coming together we can just like blossom these kids can blossom you know i remember when they had the initial pro uh, press conference for uh the, with the chancellor was there and folks mm -hmm. from apple and the chancellor said something about speaking with business industries around the houston and surrounding areas and they had told him, we need more coders. We need you guys to turn out coders because we can always hire them. Is that the case? Can coders go work just about anywhere? Are companies looking specifically for people who, have, um, who can code, but also have uh, certifications in the SWIFT technology or the SWIFT coding? Yes, there are industries who have branched out from just having a software development part than just getting into gaming and interactive app designing. So there are industries and there are new avenues that students can explore now. It's not just not coding, but also designing and creativity, because that is also important. How do you fit your app within a phone, right? Uh, the dimension of a phone. And then how do you create that? How do you code that? Uh, that's, that's uh, I think, a challenge. And students are taking it very well. And once again, um, the SWIFT coding programs or the camp will be uh, HCC instructors will be the ones uh, teaching and working with the kids? Yes, definitely. Those are the instructors uh, who have been teaching coding, programming, designing, and also virtual reality, all these uh, are all the instructors. Shilfa Fancy, the program coordinator for computer programming and an Apple fellow joining us here on the program this afternoon. Thanks for being here, Shilfa. Good luck with those camps this summer. Thank you, Doug. And once again, folks, if you're interested in sending your kids to the summer camps, well, there's a process to apply. We definitely need you to check out the link we're going to provide for you in this uh, post, social media post for the show and on your screen right now. Thanks for joining us today on the topic. For more information, you can visit our website, hccs.edu, learn everything, and register for our classes at hccs.edu slash now. I'm Todd Duplantis, and we'll see you next week.